Hey, what's up, guys? So, I've had many late nights where uh, I'm just aimlessly buying crap off eBay, and, uh, you know, two, three weeks later, you end up with a bunch of little mini boards that you have no idea what you're going to do, do with, uh, or like 50 passive infrared sensors uh, that ha you'll use them someday. Uh, well, anyway, that someday is today for these boards that I actually bought off eBay. And uh, what you're looking at here is an Arduino-controlled FM radio. Uh, and the reason I built this is because just this morning I was trying to stream NPR online, and sure enough, you know, it was skipping around like crazy. And uh, I was thinking, God, this is crazy. It's an FM radio station, you know. So I looked around. I couldn't find an FM radio, so I built one. And uh, this whole thing is controlled, like I said, from an Arduino. This is an Arduino clone down here. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below to where you can get one of these. It's basically just a little 328 breakout board. Uh, and I kind of like the Arduino Pro Minis. Uh, so we have the Arduino down there. We've got an FM radio module board here that we're communicating with via I squared C. And then the output of this is, uh, which actually has a nice little microphone, uh, not microphone, uh, headphone amplifier on there. And then that drives this 15 watt amplifier, which then of course is hooked up to these speakers. Uh, I've got a little DC voltmeter over here so that we can kind of have that cool old style uh, look to the radio. And by the way, this is just part one of this video. I plan on packaging all of this up into a nice box. And uh, yeah, the potentiometer right here adjusts the frequency and we get that display over there on the meter. And uh, I do plan on making a cool little overlay for that, you know, with the tick marks and show the frequencies. So uh, that's all coming. So we've got volume control down on the amplifier here. And let me just find a radio station right there. Okay. You know, I was actually surprised with the uh, reception quality of this FM radio. In fact, you really don't even need the antenna hooked up. Oops. There we go. And, uh, of course, surprise, the manufacturing quality of these boards was absolutely terrible. It was so bad that I couldn't even use the terminal blocks here on the amplifier. I mean, it's this board is really crusty, uh, completely corroded, so I had to... Uh, solder the speakers directly to the board and the connection from the output over here to the input of the ampl amplifier is just hard soldered over. So they happen to use the same exact 3.5 millimeter connector there. So I just matched up the pins, soldered wire, you know, uh, that pin to that pin and so on. So that was pretty straightforward. And it all works now. The system voltage here is 5 volts. So we're feeding, uh, we've got an external power supply hooked up here. Um, and then really the, the hardware connections here are, are just dead simple. So, you know, the board has five volts in ground, your SDA and S, SLC. So that's your I squared C data and clock. And if we go over to uh, the wiki page I have for the 328 board, you can see the I squared C over here and that just lines right up. So clock to clock, data to data. Uh, the meter is controlled via PWM, so that's how we're adjusting that. So that's right off of digital pin 3, so we're just doing an analog right, 0 to 255. The potentiometer, uh, we've got uh, the low side to ground, the high side to 5 volts, and then the wiper connected to analog pin 0 on the 328 board. So yeah, that's, that's all there is to it. That's the hardware. Uh, if we jump over to the code here, uh, let me quickly just bring up a serial monitor window and you can see as I rotate the knob, we get the frequency output that it's sending to the radio module. So here in the US, all of our frequencies uh, end in an odd number. So that's why you see it go 95.3, 95.5. Um, so it was important that when I swept this knob, that 0 to 1023 value correlated then back to uh, these, these numbers so that I had to skip there. I didn't want it to send, you know, the even number, and that would just be a waste, right? So it turns out that I can take that 0 to 1023 value and get a number from 0 to 100. There's, a, there's actually 100 frequency possibilities essentially in that range. 
that I'm able to send. So that'll make more sense when I jump into the code. And uh, here's the code, by the way, all in one tab, dead simple code. And uh, yeah, we can jump right into it. Let me first show you the radio module board. So here it is, and you can see the little uh, radio down there. There's the there's like a little mini board. I can't really show you, but the little oops, the little tiny green board there on the right, and then the part right in the center there is the uh, uh, headphone amplifier. And then uh, this is based on the TEA5767. It's a very, very popular FM radio uh, chipset. So there's a lot of functionality you can play with in here. Um, I'm just using it to set the frequency. You can play around with different like seek modes and things like that. So like I could, I think I might even do this uh, just as for future expansion for the, when I build the box up, have a couple buttons on there so that I could, you know, hit the button and it just seeks to the next found station. Um, but for now, the only thing I'm doing is just setting the frequency. I'm actually skimming all the way down to where it uh, breaks down the uh, I squared C uh, registers. So where are they at? Okay, so here we go. We've got the bytes here, and uh, in here as well, they 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 um, they give you the I squared C address for the radio, um, and we'll get to that. I'm just kind of queuing this up for when we get to that part in the code. Which, by the way, uh, when I was just googling around for the part, I found a uh, an FM radio library for the Arduino that that works perfectly with this chip. So I actually downloaded that and opened up that just to see what the initialization looked like and it was just so simple that I just grabbed and copied and pasted it over to my to my code but uh, just to give uh, this guy credit here uh, you can go and download that library and everything works exactly the same so um, that saved me some time okay cool so in the code what we've got here first thing is we include the wire dot H that's for the I squared C couple pound defines for the pins your knob pin and your meter pin uh, then the variables, which we'll talk about here as we work through this. The setup's simple. Set up, you know, begin the I squared C. Uh, the serial for debugging. And then we jump into the loop here. Uh, the first thing I do is loop through and grab 10 analog readings. Um, and the reason I do this is because if you're kind of like halfway in between, you know, and it's kind of dancing around, I don't want it clicking on the, the radio. Like I don't want it setting the frequency, setting it back. And you actually will hear that. And before I implemented this, that did happen quite a bit because this is just a potentiometer. This isn't an encoder, uh, which probably would have been a better choice for this. But, uh, this is a 10 turn potentiometer, by the way. So uh, it's much better than a single turn because a single turn, you know, one turn gets you all the way from one side to the other side, you know. So uh, the 10 turn helps with that quite a bit. But even then, even then, it's still an analog read on the pin, so it kind of can dance around on you a little bit. So this just provides a little bit of filtering. So it grabs the 10 readings, uh, then it maps those to the 0, 100. Like I explained, we've got 100 uh, frequencies in between there. And then it goes and... Uh, takes the 0 to 100 and converts that to a number between 87.9 to 107.9. And it also makes sure that each number is the uh, the odd value. So it's going, you know, uh, 90.3, then 90.5. And it, as you feed, you know, the values from 0 to 100 in here, you can kind of see how that works. Um, and this was uh, some test code too I was kind of playing around with. So there might be a, a more optimized way of doing that. Uh, then it loads that up into this uh, array here so that at the end of this, we have 10 values in an array. Then we loop through that array. And the idea here is that only if all 10 of those values are identical, will we actually change the radio station. So that's the whole point of this. So then it loops through. And if it ever sees a mismatch, then it just simply sets the frequency setting that we're going to write to the radio equal to the old setting, the existing setting. So uh, 
only if we get through this will it actually allow you to take the frequency setting up here that's identical, was identical 10 times in a row to go and write that to the radio. Here's where we handle the meter output. So we map the 0 to 1023 to a value from 0 to 255 for the, the PWM output to the meter, which is what we do here. Analog right meter pin with that value, 0 to 255. Uh, then only if we see a difference. So now our new value coming in, if it's new, a really truly is a new value, uh, will we go in here and print it out to the serial monitor window and then do a set frequency with that frequency setting. Uh, and I'll jump down here. That's just a function call right here where we pass the frequency. All right, right out of the data sheet, so we bring that frequency in. Right out of the data sheet, they actually show you how to calculate the value that you're, act that you're gonna feed into those registers. So you kinda have to scroll down here a little bit. And All right, buried in the data sheet <laughs> is uh, how you actually get the the frequency that you're going to use. So you can see here, uh, based on which mode you're in, we're we're using high side injection. I uh, haven't tried low side injection just to see if that would help at all. But anyway, that's another setting in those registered, but we're registers, but we're using the high side injection here, and uh, it, you do the four times the FRF plus the FIF. And uh, you can see here they've got some of these things. So the wanted tuning frequency would be your RF there. Then the IF is this uh, 225 kilohertz. And then divided by your frequency reference, which is whatever is used for the, uh, the module here. And if we go over here, you can see this. We've got the 32768 uh, uh, crystal on there. So there it is, taking your frequency. Uh, since I'm feeding it a value that's you know in megahertz already, I'm you know I'm going to feed this thing 90.3. Then we multiply that up to get the megahertz. Uh, add 225 kilohertz, and then you divide out by 3, uh, 32, 7, 6, 8, and then multiply that by four. So you see that's right out of the data sheet. Then it takes that value and splits it up into two bytes. Okay, so we shift over to the right eight times. That'll give us our high byte in there. Uh, the low byte is just anded with a double F there, which will cut off the top byte and just keep keep your uh, low byte there. Uh, then we begin the communication with the radio module at address 60. This is also in the data sheet to give you the address. And then you go right through the five bytes. There you go. There's your high byte, your low byte, third byte, fourth byte, fifth byte. And, and uh, I forget which byte here, but one of them is the setting for the high side injection. And there's some other things in that data sheet that uh, uh, in these registers that you can play with. And I was tweaking, there's one in here for like, yeah, the stereo noise canceling. I was trying to see if that would improve anything, but um, you know, you can even mute the radio. Uh, this is also how you control the seeking and you know, the threshold at which it would stop when it thinks it found a station. So yeah, there's a lot of cool things you can do in here. Oh look, you can mute right or left channels. So yeah, lots of neat things there. Uh, but really the only thing I'm using is, are the, uh, the settings in the first two bytes here, the PLL, and that's where you set your frequency. All right, so anyway, that's how that works. Sets the frequency uh, and then just the old setting is equal to the frequency sync. So that is now our new frequency that's been written to the radio. And uh, it's important to do this too because if you just continuously write to the radio, that actually will pass through to the speakers and you'll hear that pop and every time it writes the frequency, even if it's the same frequency over and over again. All right, so anyway, that's the, the project right now. Pretty simple stuff, uh, kind of a fun one, but uh, and it's useful too. So anyway, uh, look for a part two. I think I might put some lights in there. I might even put like a little microphone circuit so that at whatever, uh, not maybe not a microphone, but I might sample the audio output back into the Arduino to kind of dance the needle or maybe blink an LED or something, you know? So I don't know. It's kind of a cool one, or maybe I'll, uh, <laughs> maybe I'll even add a, a BLE module to this whole thing. And then I can control the frequency from my smartphone. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. So anyway, that's the project. Thanks for watching.